Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 41. Jeremiah 41. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah series. I'm going to try to finish it by, um, oh, the middle of March 2021. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Jeremiah 41 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the royal seed and the princes of the king. Now you got to realize this guy is one of the princes of Judah. I mean, he's a he's one of the princes of Judah. I mean, so he's uh, he's up there. That Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men with him, came to Gedaliah, uh, the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah. And there they did eat bread together in Mizpah. Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shepham, with the sword and slew him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. So evidently, Ishmael, he's living in, uh, was living around the Ammonites, and the king of Ammon, the Ammonites, wanted him to kill uh, this guy who made was made governor by King Nebuchadnezzar when Nebuchadnezzar had uh, conquered Judah. And, of course, Ishmael's probably got himself a little Ammonite uh, sweetheart, you know, probably. And who knows what the king of Ammon, the Ammonites, gave him. You know, maybe some silver. Hey, maybe 20 pieces of silver. You kill the governor. So... I don't know. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even with Gedaliah at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the men of war. Now, if they, had, if all the people had known that they were getting ready to kill him, uh, it had turned out differently. But you know, when you're when you surprise people, here it is, you think, and this guy is your buddy, and then all of a sudden pulls out his sword or knife and stabs you in the back. Well, you know. So he was doing a surprise attack. So. So Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even with Gedaliah at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the men of war. And it came to pass the second day after he had slain Gedaliah, and no man knew it, that there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men, having their beards shaven and their clothes rent, having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. Now, cutting yourself was a type of satanic ritual. Maybe I should show you that. That was a practice that the prophets of Baal would do. Now, in my Elijah uh, Bible study, all one hour and 40 minutes of it, you know, that's 100 minutes of Bible studies. Yeah, um, I cover this chapter quite well. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 25. Elijah, the prophet of the Lord, challenged the prophets of Baal 
uh, Satan, basically, to a challenge. So in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 25, and Elijah, and Elijah is my favorite Old Testament prophet, by far and away, and he's going to return one day. Yeah, he's going to confront the false prophet and the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, he's going to be one of the two witnesses. Some people say Moses will be the other one, others think it's going to be Enoch. Who were the two witnesses? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, when Christ was uh, transfigured before Peter, I think it was Peter and John, I'm not sure. But uh, when he was transfigured, Moses and Elijah appeared with him. So, I don't know. But uh, Elijah is coming back one day. He was bold, people. I I wish I, well, <laughs> I don't know. I wish I had the faith he had. Elijah called down fire from heaven. Boy, if I had that kind of power, Washington, D.C. would be a cinders. It'd be ashes. But, uh, yeah, that's not the Lord's will just yet. All right, verse 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods. Call on the name of your gods, plural, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal, from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. Sounds like a Pentecostal uh, gathering to me. You know, they leaped upon the altar. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. You know, hey, shout a talk a little louder. For he is a God. Either he is talking on the phone. You know, maybe he's on the phone. Or he is pursuing, you know, he's chasing a deer for dinner. Or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. Shout a little louder, he, you know, he might be asleep, dude. Well, that's the Bob commentary. Verse 28, and they cried aloud and cut themselves. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. See, cutting yourself, you know, you ever heard of women cut, slitting their wrists and what have you? That's, that's satanic stuff. So, there you go. They, they cried aloud and cut themselves until the, the blood gushed out. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. I think I made my point there. And if you want to read the, you know, know the rest of the story, uh, on, click on my name, and you'll go to the homepage of YouTube, and then to the upper right corner, there's what looks like a magnifying glass, and type in, Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. Then click, click, enter. And then um, you'll see Elijah. One hour and 40 minutes. 100, 100 minutes of Bible study. All right, so back to Jeremiah 41, verse 5. That there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men, having their beard shaven and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, 
come to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam. And it was so when they were come into the midst of the city that Ishmael the son of Nethaniah slew them and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and all the men that were with him. But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, you know, don't kill us, for we have treasures in the field of wheat and of barley and of oil and of honey. So he forbear and slew them not among their brethren. Said, yeah, man, don't kill us. We got, we got all kinds of stuff stashed away. You know, you'll, we'll, we'll give you that if you let us live. Verse nine. Now the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah, was it which Asa the king had made for fear of Baasha, king of Israel? And Ishmael the son of Nethaniah filled it with them that were slain. Then Ishmael carried away captive all the residue of the people that were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters, and all the people that remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakam, and Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, carried them away captive and departed to go over to the Ammonites. And in a previous study, I showed where the Ammonites and the Moabites will not enter into the congregation of the Lord, not even to the 10th generation shall they not enter forever. God doesn't like that bloodline. But when Jonahan, the son of Korea, Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were with him heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done, then they took all the men and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and found him by the great waters that are in Gibeon. And it came to pass that when all the people which were with Ishmael saw John of Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were with him, then they were glad. So all the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah, cast about and returned and went unto Yonahan, the son of Korea. And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, escaped from Yohanan with eight men and went to the Ammonites. Then took Yohanan, Yohanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were with him, all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, from Mizpah, after that he had slain Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, even mighty men of war, and the women, and the children, and the eunuchs, whom he had brought again from Gibeon. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Chimham, which is by Bethlehem, to go to enter into Egypt, because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them, because Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had slain Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had made governor in the land. You know, I'd be kind of afraid too. What are you going to do? Go to the, um, go to Babylon, go to the Chaldeans and say, uh, by the way, the guy that you made governor, he's dead. And all the troops that you had there, they're dead also. Your Chaldeans, your citizens. Uh, but we didn't do it. The other guy did. You know, you don't know if they're going to believe you or not or what they're going to do. So uh, they went into Egypt. Now, it's interesting. According to legends from England, or well, Ireland, actually, one of the king's daughters was named Tia Tifa, T-E-A-T-E-P-H-I, two words. Tia Tefa. I've heard it pronounced different ways. Sorry, I don't speak uh, Gaelic, Irish. And I have people tell me that Gaelic is very, very similar to Hebrew. Sounds alike, looks alike. But uh, according to this, Jeremiah took the king's daughters and went to Ireland 
to get away from all this crazy mess. And then the uh, king's daughters married the king of Ireland. Well, one of the king's daughters. I don't know. You'd have to look it up if you're interested. Um, I don't know how true it is. It's not in the Bible. But um, I could believe it. I really can. So wouldn't surprise me. I mean, after all, uh, the um, let's face it. The King of England, James, King James, gave us the Bible. And, uh, yeah, what can I tell you? What do the you know who's give us? They give us usury, fractional banking, pharmaceuticals. Uh, what else? What other lovely things? Oh, pornography. Hollywood movies, yeah. That's what they gave us. But King James gave us the King James Bible. So I think I'd rather stick with England. But sadly, um, what was the guy's name? The guy that overthrew King James's son and then let the you-know-who's back in England. And then everything went downhill from there. So what can I tell you? All right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.